station of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 5th, the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, Stevie's got your back. Send me an email, send it off early, and send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we got a sea of red out there. Dow's down 972, S&P 142, NASDAQ 100, 492, Russell's up 86, 100 points for the semis, 311 points for the trannies. New York Stock Exchange off 451. You got the spot politics up 66%. That's a $15 and change move. Uh, you've got gold down 25 bucks, well off of its low. Silver down 96 cents. That's a 3% plus move there. Lights we crude is off 34 pennies, about a half percent. Natural gas is down six cents. The thirty treasury up twenty five pip ticks. Print out one twenty one twenty five twenty seven. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside are Kelanova up eight bucks. That's a twelve percent move. Um, just looking for anything that's not a ETF out there. I think EDU is not an ETF. That's up four percent. Ten X Keen acquisition. Up 32 bucks. Sonic Automotive up three dollars. To the downside, it's MicroStrategy. 150 bucks, a little over 10 percent. Booking Holdings down 72, a little over 2 percent. Mitsui and Company down 34 bucks, eight and a half percent. Bank of Montreal 32 bucks, 10 percent. Eli Lilly down 31 bucks, four percent. Monolithic Power Systems 21 bucks, nearly three percent there. So we got a lot of shakers and we've got some movers. But let's start our day by doing what? Let's go take a look at the. Um, Let's look at where we're at, at least as of 11.09 in the morning with regard to the advanced decline oscillator out there. That's panel number three. That, that is the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. When that oscillator gets down to minus 150, you are in the oversold condition out there. Now, I don't know where it ends the day. If this were the end of the day, this would be telling us to prepare for some type of bounce or bottom. If we take a look at the last time that we were down here, we were down here at the minus 150 level back in the trade day of June 17th. The prior day was a bottom, led to a heck of a nice rally. That rallied from uh, that from that June day to the high of uh, July 16th out there. If we take a look at the one that uh, formed prior to that, it was on May 29th. So an even longer rally from May 29th up into that high that came in in uh, July. If we go take a look at the time before that, that's when we formed a nice bottom in, April, in the April time period. April 16th is when we got that lowest reading in that advanced client oscillator, which was down below the minus two, it was at the minus 283 level. Go back and take a look at another time period period. That was January 17th when that oscillator got to minus 204. That created quite a bottom out there. I guess what Stevie's trying to communicate to you via this chart, 
what the chart is communicating to you, I'm just a narrator here, is to expect and anticipate some type of oversold rally, bounce, or something along those lines. Now, that is specifically true if, in fact, that advanced client oscillator closed below 150 at day zen. You and I, we can go back and take a look at it come tomorrow. What's the second thing? What's the second element out here? The second element, you and I touched on this on Friday, and that is the spot volatility, which is basically line number two on my chart right now, shows you at 37.50. Look at the three-month volatility index, 32.48. Look at the six-month, 29. Look at the one-year, 26.41 out there. Take a look at each of the equity, not the each of the equity, each of the spot VIX, each of the VIX futures contracts out there. Don't worry, I'll get my grammar working eventually. You can see that the highest is August. That's at 30. We are in backwardation here. What does that tell us? That tells us you better expect a, a bounce, a really good bounce out there is very likely. So that's what's going on. We take a look at those two um, tools and Stevie's arsenal out here. Now let's go take a look at what's going on on the intraday charts. Let's start with that NQ. In a moment, we'll get to the white background screens. You'll have anywhere from a daily time frame down to a 10-minute time frame. On a daily time frame, it's a bullish hammer candle right now. Holy shnikes. We don't have any gap as well. So if we were to get a bullish reversal candle, a hammer candle, you would get a Gartley buy pattern today. No idea whether that's going to be a bullish hammer candle day's end or not. Maybe it's going to be some other kind of candle out there. But a bullish reversal candle. Now, price, what the NQ did was it got all the way back to a prior swing point out here. So that prior swing point was from the trading session of April the 19th. It actually never made it to the low of that swing point, which is a little bit more of a bullish uh, uh, a sign as far as Stevie is concerned. We got down to uh, well, 17,338 was the uh, was that uh, bottom of that swing point. We got down to low 17,351. Now, um, so that's a daily time frame. Again, you're waiting for a bullish reversal candle at day's end to confirm a Gartley buy pattern and buy the D point pattern. Got a TD nine count bottom on the five hour chart. Its price target is going to be its oscillator and change line, 18 to 80. A TD nine count bottom pattern on the uh, four hour term time frame chart. Its level of resistance right now is at 18,120. So at 18,120 to 18,280, that's going to be your resistance zone. If price is able to close above those levels, we should see a further rally. The further rally, according to the four hour chart, would be 18,496 followed by 18,783. Uh, we are likely to get a further rally. The reason is if we take a look at that two hour time frame chart, now this candle, uh, albeit does not close till 12 noon, but what we can see here at the moment is we are trading above that oscillator and change line. We have not traded above that oscillator and change line since 10 o'clock in the morning on August the 1st. That's given us a signal of a change in trend out there, an oscillator change in trend, and that ought to take price up towards 18.5. Uh, 8825. There is a battle 18340, 1846, and then finally that 18588 ish area. If you look at the 60 minute time frame chart, TD Nike out bottom, price dealing with the sell zone. The sell zone out here on a 60 minute time frame is between 18089 and 18274. And if you can close above 18274, you've got one more final battle, 18390. The key area right now, though, is a 30 minute TD Nike out breakdown level. That's where price is trading in. To. It uh, has a uh, Rhodes-Mintum indicator bottom signal, never generated the bullish reversal candle. Doesn't matter. The key level out here right now is 18.154. You get a 30-minute close, really get two 30-minute closes above that. That tells you it's game on. It is rally on inside of the NQ. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Still got all the U.S. indices, sectors, and the S&P trading the downside. You've got the ES Mini down 132 points out there. Uh, it has attained more than its one to one A to B equals CD price projection. A bullish reversal candle here. It's gotten down to its uh, third breakout level at the 51.55 area. Bullish reversal candle here would confirm a Gartley buy pattern suggests to rally up towards the 54.59 level. It's not the message that we have at the moment. Five-hour message has a TD9 count bottom. Price should rally up to 53.24. We've got a uh, no bottom. Well, let me pull this back here. So you got an A to B equals C D pattern that is likely to uh, confirm a buy the D point pattern. Well, that's not till two o'clock today, but at the moment you've got that bullish reversal candle. If you have that at 2 p.m., the four-hour time frame chart will generate a buy the D point pattern. The two-hour chart has a T D nine count bottom. Uh, trying to form a road's momentum indicator bottom. We're price dealing with that key level. That's that oscillator and change line. Just like on the NQ out there, it's that oscillator and change line. It's going to be your key line of demarcation. Here on the ES Mini, that number is at 5240. It's called 5247, 5248. If price closes above that, then we would likely have not only would you have a road's momentum indicator, TD9 count bottom, price taking out that oscillator and change line, you would likely get a rally up towards 5343. That's where a counter trend move on a two hour time frame would find that resistance it really would be between 5325 but 5343 would be the key number to be watching 60 minute roads momentum indicator bottom price consolidating with inside this profile watch 5256 to the upside a close above that and you're likely headed to 5376 you've got um, 30 minute uh, roads momentum indicator signal no well you've got that bullish reversal candle now what price is doing is taking out its sell zone the sell zone is between 5209.75 and 5132.75 out there. If we close above the 5130, I'm sorry, if we close above the 5235 level, 5235 is the top of that sell zone. If you close above that, we should continue to head higher. You got the 15 minute taking, uh, taking a uh, whack at the uh, TD9 count breakdown level. 
52.45.50 is a key level for it. If it closes above that, that suggests a further rally. How would you sum all this stuff up? The market is absolutely trying to form some type of buyable bottom, some type of certainly bounceable bottom between the spot volatilics that we looked at, New York Stock Exchange, Advanced Line Ostender, New York Stock Exchange closing again on Friday with a uh, more than 10% one-day rate of change out there. Eventually, that is going to take hold out there. So that's what's going on with the ES and the NQ. We don't have many requests. In fact, we only have one request, so maybe that's two requests out there. Let's take a look at um, let's take a look at ticker symbol CLSK. This is for a peak G inside the Tiger's Den. Get over to that chart, and that is uh, Clean Spark Inc. So we get over here to Clean Spark Inc. What is this doing? So let's pull open the daily time frame chart. On a daily basis, what we have is a A to B equals CD pattern that went ahead and formed on Friday. So let's take a look at that A to B line. We'll just simply peak. We'll just simply go ahead and add this to the C point out there. But there's your A to B line. Let's move this over to the highest high. That's pretty easy to see out there. That took place right here on this trading day, which was um, June 20th. So what you've got now is you've attained the one-to-one -one price level peak. And if you were to see a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a Gartley buy pattern. Short of that, price is likely to go target its breakout level. That's down at 764. That is the message of the daily time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows that price is trading below. We don't know it's only Monday, but right now it's trading below its bullish structured weekly profile. If it does not regain 1333 at day zen, which would then signal this has been a false move to the downside, we're likely to go target its breakout level. The breakout level for it is down at 346. I imagine this has the same A to B equal CD pattern. Let Stevie just make sure of that for you. But I think that it is. I really wasn't paying as close attention as I should have. Yeah, uh, so it's the same A to B equals CD pattern out there. On the monthly time frame, you've got uh, Clean Spark Inc. Peak that is testing a key level of support. That is that green oscillator and change line. If at the end of the month price were to close below it, it being 1184, that would suggest lower price. I would say 551 would be its price target. So with regard to Clean Spark, watch for a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame. Otherwise, price heads back to its breakout level. Uh, basically, the same kind of thing on the weekly. But I'd watch the daily right now, I'd say, is controlling the price target level, 764 being your downside price target out there. So I hope that helps you out, Peak. And as always, thanks so much for your request. Now, just curious here. I don't know if uh, CLSK has enough data here for it does. Let's take a look at the seasonal patterns for you. We have a total of 12 years worth of uh, data out here. And uh, typically this rallies, it's it's kind of a, uh, so typically this rallies into about August the 10th. Clearly we don't have that pattern that's in place out here. We've got an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. Um, so I don't know if this seasonal pattern of the last 12 years is really helping out a whole lot. I would stick with the patterns as we speak right now, and that's that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, and it's breakout level at 764. So, Pete, hope I provided you with the information you were looking for. It's correlated to Bitcoin. Well, if it's correlated to Bitcoin, do you, what's the future contract that's being traded for Bitcoin? Is it August or September? I'm going to go with I'm going to go with September at this stage here. Uh, 0924. We can see what Bitcoin is doing out there. Just simply don't have any requests in. And you mentioned that. You say it's correlated to Bitcoin. So, okay. I guess you can kind of, eh, it looks like maybe it's the August contract. Let's see, see if I get a little bit more data there. Let me see. Second here, we'll get that pulled up while I take a swig. Hmm. That's not a whole lot better out there um, with regard to data. So uh, what I can share with you with regard to Bitcoin, the level here to be watching peak would be uh, 57,330. That's on the August contract. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. We can see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. It would need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a uh, bottom. So uh, hope that hope all that information helps you out. Always good to hear from you. And thank you very much for your request. Uh, Jim Belaya says, uh, could you extend your introduction to offer your impression of the dollar down? Japanese market DAX and disconnect that happened overnight. So first, let's take a look at the Japanese market. This is, and I mentioned this the day that it happened. 
Um, I just couldn't find a, a good way for anybody out there to play the the uh, the uh, Chang the uh, Nikkei to the um, the Nikkei to the uh, downside with some type of ETF. And that is, if you give me a moment, let's put up the uh, Nikkei and got to remember what the. Here we go. That's the future. We want the index. Where's the index? Here we go. So the Nikkei. Uh, Jambalaya formed a uh, formed the most bearish pattern at all time high that you could you could ever. It's going to be in Stevie's textbook if I ever write a textbook, and that is the island top out there. So if you take a look at what's going on inside of the uh, Nikkei, here's your island top that formed on the trading day. Well, it formed between the trading days of July 10th and July 12th out there, and that's at an all time high island top out there. So the um, with the price behavior that we're seeing out here, first jambalaya, we'll come back and continue to take a look at the markets out there. But what we see going on inside the Japanese market, the Nikkei, that was all brought to you by that island top at an all-time high. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, Jim Belay inside the Tiger's Den was asking about the Nikkei. We took a look at that. It's island top. It's doing what it should do. In essence, if we take a look at the DAX, DAX formed a road momentum indicator top, which was confirmed back in May, May 16th, to be exact out there. Um, you ended up getting a road momentum indicator top that was confirmed on the weekly time frame, July 19th. Um, price is likely going to go target the 16607 level um, uh, jam. That's at the uh, weekly TD9 count breakout area, monthly below the oscillator and change line. So, uh, and on Friday, what you had, you know, you had price take out its prior swing points, the prior swing points for the DAC back on June the 14th. So it's kind of doing what the signals were pointing at. You asked about the U.S. dollar index. For that, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, change screens out there. So I've got the Japanese market. We'll take a look at the dollar index out here. So give me a moment, and we'll take a look at it. And we're going to take a look at it a couple different ways. The first way is the actual U.S. dollar index. So what is this communicating to you and I? Number one, uh, there's an A to B equals CD pattern, A to B equals A to B equals CD to the downside pattern on a daily time frame. Today hit the one to one price objective. That was at 102.10. Its next level to the downside would be 101.43, below that 100.58. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, we can see that price has been trading with inside the get smart cone of silence out there between its falling trend line and its rising trend line. Whereas price pulled back to it's pulled back to a cluster of rising trend lines out there. That says the U.S. dollar index ought to find support. Of course, we'll know we'll find support if you get a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame. That would confirm a Gartley buy pattern. On a weekly time frame, the U.S. dollar index is pulling back and testing support. The support is the buy zone. The buy zone is between 100.47 and 102.15. Monthly chart just shows a sideways movement here for basically the last five or six, seven, eight months uh, or so with regard to the U.S. dollar index. So that's what's going on. We take a look at that chart. But if we go take a look at the euro, the yen, and the pound, which we will do momentarily, we're going to switch back to those white background screens. This is what we really want to pay attention to to get a feel for what the U.S. dollar index is actually communicating to us. And at the moment, if we take a look at the uh, euro out there, the euro had negated a TD9 account bottom. But boy, it didn't really care about that on Friday because it had just one nice huge rally. And today, an even further rally, the type of rally that could set up a very large A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. All it has to really do is close above the high from July 17th. That's the DAX that we're talking about. And that high is at 1.0948. I know it flies in the face of, uh, of what one might think with regard to uh, war stuff like that going over in Europe here. But the euro is a tool truly strengthening today. And that A to B equals CD pattern could get us up towards uh, could get us up towards the 110 ish level. So, um, you know, a little bit a little bit more money uh, for those of you that are uh, over in Italy as we speak right now. Uh, the last couple of days didn't help didn't help you out there. And at this stage here, looks like it wants to continue to move higher. I don't see any kind of a topping signal for the daily time frame for the euro. Just that A to B equals CD pattern to the upside that is forming today. In the case of the yen out there, uh, Jam, you've got a bar number nine that's going to complete in its currency pair. So it's been getting quite a bit stronger out there. Looks like that strength probably comes to an end by the end of the day tomorrow out there with that TD9 count. And that should lead to a rally towards 151. Now, the pound is really not doing a whole lot. As you can see, uh, it negated a TD9 count uh, bottom pattern. It did that on Thursday. Um, it's just been trading sideways the last couple of days. So all the movement really, or most of the movement inside the U.S. dollar index is coming from the euro and the yen. The uh, euro looks like it. Well, now, look, if the euro closes back below 1.0941 at day's end uh, jam, then a key level of resistance will have held. And, you know, if you can't bust them up, maybe price is going to try to bust them down. That would then suggest that the euro would get weaker, the dollar would get stronger. And in this case here, the yen is basically signaling that's a likely outcome, uh, at least by uh, by uh, Wednesday, by tomorrow evening out there. So I hope that helped you out. I hope I got everything for you. The yen, the DAX, even, uh, even a couple of bonuses out there because we took a look at the euro uh, as well as the uh, Japanese uh, uh, yen out there and, of course, the Nikkei. So uh, thanks so much for your request. Uh, we've got some other requests that have come in. Let's go ahead and get to those. First one is from Hector and Patty. Uh, they're along the GDX. You've got an A to B equals CD pattern on the downside. In essence, it's achieved the GDX, a daily time frame. It's one-to-one -one price objective out there. Let's draw that pattern. Let's see, draw the A to B 
uh, signal in here. And of course, that would then suggest that if you were to get a bullish reversal candle on the, um, yeah, there's your, your, your beyond the one to one level out there. Uh, today's, a, today's a bearish candle. It's green, but it's still bearish because it was a gap to the downside, otherwise known as a falling window out there. Now, the positive could be that even though I don't have a bottoming pattern, price may have bottomed, may have found support. The GDX, that is. Why? Because price on a weekly basis is trading into its buy zone. So this is the level here, Hector and Patty, that you really want to be paying attention to. Those levels being between 33.50 and 34.15. If price were to close below 33.50, that would suggest lower price. 32.85 would be one of those price targets out there. Um, the weekly, the monthly chart looks still bullish. But we won't really know till the end of the month out there. So it's the weekly. It's really the weekly that's going to be key for you. And that's watching that buy zone. And, of course, in the daily, you'd love to see some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm a, a buy the D point pattern. But as you know, it's really going to be about Goldilocks, right? Right. We know about the directional correlation between uh, gold and the GDX. It's very specific out there. It's very directional. So let's pull up. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's pull up. The December contract for gold, get a feel for what it's communicating to you and I. It is certainly off of its session lows out there. Let's see if we can find any kind of bottom signals or patterns out there. So on a daily time frame, much like the GDX on its weekly uh, time frame, Hector and Patty pulled back to its buy zone. That's what gold has done for its daily time frame, the buy zone between 2417 and 2430 out there waiting for these other time frames here to populate sorry that it's taken a few moments to do that um what do we see out here we see a td9 count bottom on the 60 minute chart where price dealing with resistance that resistance is the oscillator and change line if price can close above it it being specifically 2447 price closed about 2447 where hector and patty were likely headed to 2494 if that happens the gdx should continue to rally if we take a look at the uh looks like the two hour time frame chart has a gartley buy pattern yeah there's the a to b we can see the c to d so this suggests a rally up towards 2469 that's goldilocks so you're still watching that uh, 60 minute oscillator and change line the price gets above that you now have two price targets 2469 and 2494 out there so i'd watch goldilocks with regard to the gdx trade that you're in out there because of that directional correlation we come back from this break we're going to go take a look at two instruments for mohammed one is RSP, that's the equal weight for the uh, S&P 500, and Marvell, MRVL is a ticker symbol. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. 
with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We'll take a look at the uh, ETF that represents the equal weighted um, instruments with inside the S&P 500. And uh, that's called RSP. When we take a look at RSP, this has a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top formed on July 18th. Price today is testing the TD9 count breakout level. And that's at 163.36. So you want to watch that, Mohammed. Two closes below that would suggest lower price. Odds, I believe, odds favor that that level holds. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, that's the reason why I'm suggesting that is because price is pulled back into its buy zone, established by that bullish structure profile, and that's between the range of 159.79 and 162.69. The uh, monthly time frame chart um, might form a TD9 count at month's end, might form a TD9 count, um, a Rosemont Dominicator top at month's end. It's just too early with it being August 5th to, to try to make that call out there. So keep your eye on the daily and the weekly. Price got back to a key level of support, then it's likely to rally further. Speaking of that being a key level of support, we'll come back to Marvell for you in a few moments. But just to kind of go with that thought process, what I would do is I would put up this set of charts. Well, then put them up, Stevie. Uh, and that is this set of charts here, daily, weekly, and monthly for the Dow, S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000. And uh, my focus is really on the weekly time frame chart. First, if we take a look at the Dow, what we can say about the Dow is price has not even gotten back to a breakout level. That would be at 37,122. I'm not saying that it won't get back there, but on a weekly basis, that's the first level that price <coughs> would need to close below to suggest that this has got uh, more legs to the uh, downside out there. So we don't have that signal from the Dow. Do we have that from the S <coughs> from the S&P 500? The answer to that question is no. Here's the S&P 500. I thought I had put up all of them. Give me a second here. Guess I didn't really finish that work off. Should have. Put this up here. Now let me put up a few more days as well. Well, I guess I don't need really need to put up a few more days. So here's all your TD9 count breakout levels. Um, I don't have the breakdown levels at this moment. And uh, so you can see if we come back to the highs that were forming back in January, back in 2022, once price started breaking that breakdown level out there at 4164, you know, that led us to lower price out here. Since the uh, bottom that formed back in October of 2023, we can see that we've not seen any kind of close below that breakout level of support. Well, voila. Thank you to today. Today, what do we see? Prices pulled back. It opened basically at that 51.42 level um, out there, and that area is held. So a key level to be watching for the S&P 500, you want to write this number on your pad of paper with certainty out there, uh, and that's for imprint for certain. <laughs> Just a little joke there. 51.42.42 is that number. If we start to see closes below that on a weekly basis, we're likely to head lower. 46.82 would be the number. How about the NDX 100? Well, the NDX 100, we really won't know till week's end. 
price here this morning gaps down below the breakout level. We're trading back above it. Uh, 17, 9, 37, 28. That's going to be a number to watch at week's end. But as we can speak right now, as of 11.45, that level of support is held inside the NDX 100. Finally, we take a look at the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 breakout level support for its weekly time frame, 19.21.40. We're still well above that level out there. So no breakdowns on a weekly basis for either, for any of these four. Uh, equity uh, uh, for any of these four cash index charts out there. But you've got the numbers to watch. It's just Monday, so it's very early into the trading week out there. But those are key levels of support to be watching. Now, let's go back and take a look at Marvell for Mohammed out there. And that's going to be MRVL as a ticker symbol. That's the wrong one. What did Stevie do? Did I do it there? I did not. So uh, let's uh, put uh, Marvell up. I thought I put it in here, but. Apparently, I did not. So let's do that right now, MRVL. We'll wait just a moment for this to populate. And uh, so right now, you got the Dow off 829. The S&P's down one and a quarter. NASDAQ's off 440. Russell's down 64. And Marvell is uh, down a buck 68 right now. Uh, this is trading in, just trying to look at what we're doing here longer term. So on a longer term basis, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern on the downside. The B point had volume, that was the week of April 26, had volume of uh, 52 million shares. Last week, that was passed with uh, 68 million shares. So there's your weekly A to B equals CD, A to B equals CD to the downside pattern, with price right now targeting that breakout level of support. So let's get this pattern drawn in here. Let's actually move that to the uh, C point of an A to B equals CD. So on a weekly basis, you can see we've attained that one-to-one -one price level. You'd be looking at a bullish reversal candidate to confirm a bottom here. Now, it may have bottomed. Due to the weekly chart getting back to that breakout level at 52.89. And 52.89 is a key area to watch, just like we took a look at on those cash index charts out there. 52.89, if you get a close below that, we're likely headed lower. Now, what this tells us, we don't have to redraw in the daily A to B equals CD pattern. This tells us that any bullish reversal candle on a daily basis is going to confirm a Gartley buy pattern, a buy the D point. And that would then, Mohammed, lead to a rally towards resistance, which at the moment, as of 1147 a.m., would be at about 63.54. But we don't have that bullish reversal candle just yet, so it's not like we're calling a rally up towards that 63.55 level. Yes, I did say on the day, on the weekly time frame, price may have bottomed because of getting back to that breakout level support. Now we need the daily to be the one that really sends that to trigger. Um, if 52.89 were to fail, the next buy zone out here, Mohammed, would be between 39.07 and 46.61, and that is courtesy of the monthly time frame chart. So I hope that helps you out, and uh, thank you for your request. Nicholas writes in, and Nicholas writes a great question, and Nicholas, I wish I could answer it. Maybe somebody in the den can answer that. His specific question was basically, which of which of the following instruments would be the best for a rebound? Would it be the Qs? Would it be the SPY? Would it be the Russell 2000, the IWM? Would it be the semis uh, via the semi eight, uh, the SMHs out here, which I've got up on our screen? And I wish I knew the answer to that. If I knew the answer to that, uh, boy, everybody that's listening right now would be one happy camper. So you've identified four. Uh, I just split it 25% each then, if you, if you have the hankering to uh, take that uh, long position out there. Now, we take a look at the SMHs. They've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. They need a bullish reversal candle. You've got the weekly. So the SMHs at this moment in time, uh, Nicholas, is uh, trading below that weekly TD nine count breakout level, 218.22. It may regain that at uh, week's end, and therefore it will have not broken that key level of support. But it has, so I'd say the SMHs do not look as good as the um, – as the S&P 500, as the NASDAQ, as the uh, Dow, as the IWM. But what you really have got to do here to answer your question specifically is get down in the weeds. Take a look at the top 10, top five instruments inside of each of these in order to identify which one might give you the uh, best uh, rebound out there. So that's what I see. Uh, I wish I had more information for you uh, out there. 
um, uh, it, it, it is what it is. There's not much more that I can do. So I hope that helped you out, Nicholas. And uh, just go take a look at those top ten instruments for the IWM. You should be able to find them. For the SPY, you can find that certainly for the SMH and certainly for the Qs out there. From those charts, identify which ones have the best patterns, and that might be the one that gives you the best outcome because you're going to be taking a look at resistance levels on any kind of a rally. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Uh, I've got the uh, charts up here for the S&P 500. Uh, they're showing the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame. They're showing the consecutive moves higher. Those are black digits. And consecutive moves lower. Those are the uh, red digits out there. What we know is that you typically have these two to four bar knee-jerk reactions, so to speak, in the, uh, in the opposite direction of the uh, trend. And so, Nicholas, you know, going back to your question, which of those four are the best ones? This is where it's going to start to get a little bit dicey. Now, we can see that today is going to be likely, very likely, bar number three of consecutive moves to the downside. 
We had that uh, most recently back on July 25th that led to a two bar rally out there really actually topped after four days out there but it was a two bar consecutive rally out there that's the first uh, two day rally that we've had since the high from july 16th today's not going to be day number one not unless we get above uh friday's close out there and i don't think that's a very likely outcome uh, but you should at least get a one or two day um rally uh, that would uh, you know we're sort of rallying off the bottom but i'm referring to consecutive higher closes out there and that's where you come kind of becomes a danger with regard to what is the best play out here if we look at because you could just get two days of a rally and then boom we start heading further south the weekly time frame chart says yes yeah, stevie but maybe not so fast maybe we're going to rally for a week or two uh, why would we do that well, right now we are in bar number four to the downside inside the S&P 500. You can see the last time the S&P 500 any significant decline to the downside was a three-bar rally. And that was back on April the 19th out there, April 19th, 2024. Uh, the time before that was a two-bar move to the downside on October 27th of 2023 out there. Um, so kind of tough. If I put up the NDX 100 here real quickly. And we can see what it is doing out here. I would imagine this has performed uh, poorer than the uh, S&P, although we're in bar number three on the daily time frame to the downside. So very now this is suggesting it could be week number five to the downside on a weekly basis. And that's something that we would really want to pay attention to come weekend. Because if we have five consecutive moves to the downside, that could be telling us that we've got a, a significant change in trend. That is underway. Folks, thanks so much for joining me on Magical Monday. Stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll see you back here tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Take care, folks.